you. Thank you so much. It's fantastic to be here at WPC. I uh, hope you all have had a fantastic couple of days. Uh, lots of great keynotes, sessions, networking, and good old-fashioned fun. Um, congratulations to all the German fans out there. Yeah. I, I know you got early to watch the game, and you know, hopefully you're recovering. Look, for me, it's just such a pleasure to be at WPC. Having grown up, uh, all my life, it seems like, uh, definitely all my adult life at Microsoft, uh, I have marked the passing of time through all of these events, partner events and developer conferences. Pretty much I can sort of look at my 22 years uh, and look back, uh, both the birth of my kids as well as the shift in up. And that's how I feel when I come here, back to a familiar place and in this new role, for me, it's an amazing privilege. So I wanted to start with a big thank you. I have worked in so many products throughout my 22 years at Microsoft, and there's been one thing constant about them. They have pretty much all been partner-led. That is at the core of what we have done as a company. We have always built products and experiences that lend themselves for this great partner model of ours and this great ecosystem. And to me, saying a thank you from the bottom of my heart is how I think I want to start. It means a lot. What you have done in terms of the feedback you give us, the push you give us, that constant pursuit you have for customer success. Many times, it's not if you're critical of us. And that is what I believe has pushed us collectively to have all the success over the years. And it's just not the business success. In fact, I can remember back to the launch of the first version of Windows NT to now, how the stories of partners have inspired us, the impact that partners have had have inspired us. And so I want to talk about some of them today. The first person I want to reference is Juan Rodriguez, who is here with us. And Juan's story begins in Venezuela. Uh, he came to the United States at the age of 14, started his first consulting company, uh, teaching DOS uh, in, I guess, the early part of 1990 during a recession. I remember that very distinctly because that's when I entered the workforce. And since then, he's had a tremendous amount of success. And in fact, he has got four thriving consulting businesses in the Los Angeles area, uh, doing everything from our server products to Office 365 and Azure. So you've kept up with everything that we have thrown your way and thrived. But perhaps more than anything else, the thing that you've done that inspires me is what you've done to teach 30,000 individuals technology. That is impact. And Juan, we thank you very much for that. So let, let's go to Dan Scarf of .NET Solutions in the UK. Now, Dan got started really early. Uh, he wrote his first computer program in BASIC. Bill will be proud of you. Um, at 12, and he fell in love with AppDev. I mean, he did. Who, who doesn't? But he does. He did writing applications for customers across all the various platforms. And this just last year, he's turned his focus to writing applications, uh, which are web experiences for a mobile first world. And guess what? He's had his best year ever. He's had 300% growth building those solutions. 
That's the kind of growth we all can see as we renew our rights. Thank you, Dan, for what you've done and what you do. And the last part I want to talk about is Hatam Salam. Uh, from Dubai, he has a business in Egypt. Um, he works in many parts of the Middle East. He's an education partner of ours. Education, as you can imagine, if you want to have impact in society, education is the place uh, because you really change outcomes of lives. Uh, and he's built this connected gateway solution, uh, which is getting released. Uh, in fact, in Quata, what I understand, you have 125,000 students and 15,000 teachers who are really changing how content and courseware is delivered and more importantly, how the effectiveness is measured. And that means you're changing outcomes. Uh, and that's, that's a SharePoint-based solution. Now he's available on Azure. But the thing that you've done is that pursuit of building solutions that can have that broad impact in society. Uh, and education as a vertical, as an industry, as a part of uh, an economy is something that I think we as an ecosystem have done great work and in fact, if anything, we get to do more going forward. So thank you for that, Hatam, and congratulations. I know there are stories. Uh, many, many more inspirational journeys uh, that are represented here today. And all of that is what I think makes this ecosystem what it is. So that's the inspiration, that's the confidence, that's the push with which we move forward to this mobile-first, cloud-first world. I've talked about this in a couple of different places. In fact, you know, living amongst 30,000 computer scientists at Microsoft, you always get a mail once a day where somebody says, hey, do you have a, two things to be first? Can't you solve? And then you kind of look at it and say, yeah, this is one of those places where the sorting algorithm doesn't work. Because it is true that without the cloud, there is going to be no device. It's about mobility. Device. It's about mobility. The cloud orchestrates. But without m mobile endpoints, be they sensors or mobile devices, you're not going to have the impact in the world and the people's lives. So you have to think of, you know, of computing as and our goal simply as an ecosystem. It's a tremendous opportunity. We see it today. The people with connected devices. There's going to be over 200 billion sensors out there. The amount of application development that spans all of that computing is going to explode. They're going to both generate tons and tons of zettabytes of data. They're also going to consume and reason for that large data. All of this at the explosion in spend and the ocean in spend and the shift percentage of GDP. IT spends, I mean, think about it. That's one of the things that makes being in this industry real fun. Because there is not a... vertical industry, a person where software and the devices that are powered by software are not touching. That's our opportunity. But the real question that needs to be asked as well as answered is you, as an ecosystem that is unique, that is impactful, the answer is clear. We are the company and the ecosystem that will build and productivity experiences and platforms for the mobile first, cloud first world. We are the company and the ecosystem that is going to reinvent product generation. We are going to empower every individual and every organization to do more and achieve more. That's our singular mission. That is something that is unique to us. That's in our core that we are going to go do.
I think all this abundance of computing power, what is scarce? It's human attention. It's time for us to reinvent productivity so that every individual on the planet can get more out of every moment of their life it is a great mission. That is what we need to go solve. That is where we get to add value. The other place, with all this abundance of applications, data, devices, also comes complexity. We are the company, we are the ecosystem that can harmonize the various interests of individual users and people, IT and developers. Bring it so that people can achieve more and do more. It's something that again, we can do. Those, that's the platform sensibility hat. And we are going to have to bring, and we are going to have to bring that to this world of mobile first, cloud first. And to go after this, we're going to do one thing. We're going to get very focused on building out these digital work and life experiences. This next generation of productivity broadly defined. And everything else, we form forms in the cloud for it, we'll build platforms on the device for it, we will make sure our experiences are pervasive and ubiquitous, we will make sure that it's possible across the various industries. That is what we are going to do. It's not multiple strategies, it's not multiple things of focus, it's one core that represents the best of what we have and what we represent, but more importantly, the boldness with which we can go forward in defining it. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these. When it comes to digital work and life experiences, the thing that we are going to do is start having great experiences individually. That means we're going to have fantastic email, great file sharing, great communication and collaboration. So these are all the brands that you know and love as one drawing. But it's just not about any one of these applications. It's not the application silos themselves. We are building an operating system for human activity across all of their daily life, across all of their, de their devices. That is what the future of office, the future of dynamics represents for us. Digital, we are building out that digital infrastructure that ties together people, their activities, their relational facts of their life, be their photos or documents at work. That is what digital work and life experiences mean. We're going to do the best job, enable, do use. This entire notion that somehow I'll buy my device for consumption and personal use, and then for, I'll give up that device for work and take another device, just doesn't work. We know that. And simply saying even just BYOD is not good enough. We've got to harmonize this dual usage. We absolutely have to be the best in the world when it comes to taking Skype and Link, OneDrive and OneDrive for Business, Outlook and Exchange, and every one of these experiences, operating systems in Windows, ought to be built to excel for this dual use. And that's what will drive productivity. If you think about it, at the end of the day, it's not just about, I want to be productive, not just at work. Productivity is not this niche. In fact, it's the most secular, broadest category of computing. I want to get more out of my time. I want, you know, because of the geofence reminders in Cortana of what it is that I should tell my daughter because it knows that tomorrow is a recital for her. Us to be able to reason over all of your data in a personal way and to give you back that moment and create those moments of productivity. We are going to have a on all platforms. 
That means every home screen out there, our aspiration is to have one or many Microsoft icons, Microsoft digital experiences. They're all entry points for us as an ecosystem. An opportunity to be able to have anyone advice into our ecosystem. That's our promise with which we will move forward. So let's talk a little bit about our cloud operating system. We have an amazing opportunity ahead here. Company that's going to build infrastructure that meets the reality, the politics of the world, the regulatory regime of the world, and yet gives them the hyperscale economics. So that means we are the company that can provide the data center backplane for all computing needs of a complex private cloud, public cloud. Cloud and hybrid cloud. Earlier keynotes, especially your current hardware or Hyper-V, and yet how you can tier your storage with something like Store Simple. Those are pretty unique things. That is, in fact, adding value to your IT dollars spent today, as opposed to just trying to rip and replace an entire architecture. Of providing that one infrastructure backlink is, I believe, one of the biggest benefits that this ecosystem can drive in the marketplace. We're also going to have the most constant end-user infrastructure. So this is spanning device management, identity management, and data security. I can't be more excited about Enterprise Mobility Suite. Uh, it's a fantastic piece of technology. It's got lots of uh, but it's the place where we will shine because the, the IT, where as there is more bring our own device, as there is more adoption of SaaS application, as there is more cybersecurity incidents in your organization. You need this control plane. And what we have done there by bringing one architecture of identity management, device management, and data security to manage this world of multiple device platforms and multiple SaaS applications. And when it comes to big data, we're going to have a very rich big data platform out there. It's going to be comprehensive. We're going to have all the storage capabilities for SQL and NoSQL. We're going to have all the processing capabilities on top of it, from streams processing to even machine learning. But the only shine is going to be around insights. At the end, issue that wants to thrive data needs to provide for a culture of data. And that's not going to happen if you don't have those end user analysis and visualization tools and which, you know, what is it? So we're taking Everview, Power Pivot, and even Power Q&A, which is now a natural language way of being able to ask questions and get answers, and integrating it into the tools that people use on a daily basis, be Excel or SharePoint. And that's a place where we as an ecosystem can truly help organizations be more productive because of a data gesture that we have enabled, not just big data. The last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the cloud OS is perhaps my favorite, because I grew up with this, is modern application development. First of all, we have built out Everything that we do, even in our digital work and life experiences, such that it's a developer surface area. So that means when you have, you have your calendar in exchange, when you have SharePoint lists, even the data in OneNote, all that are APIs. All that is exposed as APIs. So you can build solutions using it. 
That is where our developer platform starts. In fact, the most strategic developer surface area for us is Office 365. And obviously that even gets to it dynamics. And this very rich cloud infrastructure in Azure. We have these rich higher level services for handling mobile backends, web backends, doing media, doing machine learning and advanced analytics, all forms of data storage and processing. That gives you more capabilities as a developer. But at the container level or the virtual machine level, we have really made sure that it's a very open platform. In Windows, which we obviously do a great job of, around 15% has Linux and various packages of Linux. And so that means we have the most open infrastructure for any kind of solution. So we want to thrive in this heterogeneous world when it comes to the public cloud. And that's the opportunity for us when it comes to application development. But we don't have done our building out the tool chain. Productivity of the developer, because think about it, what drives your profitability, your ability to do more, is the productivity of your own developers and your own employees. And with Visual Studio Online and TFS, we have taken what is code, source code management, build, pro project management and modernized it, really plumbed it through all the way here. That is what will help you drive your business forward, take on more, take on more ambitious projects. And so I'm pretty excited about what we can do with the Cloud OS together. The next thing I want to talk about is Windows. Windows and Web. The goal for us is to have them take our digital work life experiences and have them shine. The shell, what we do with our privacy policy, what we do with inking, what we do with our first party hardware when it comes to touch, when it comes to pen, all of those things are optimized for this productivity experience. That will, of course, have all the consumptive experience. You will have video. You will have all of the places where you can enjoy the consumptive experiences. But we will shine in these productivity experiences. That's what the role of Windows is and the role of our first-party hardware. I want to be very clear. The goal with our first-party hardware is to create category, but we want to stipulate demand for the entire ecosystem. Tony Prophet showed you the just line up even going into this back to school and the holiday season. It's a fantastic lineup. We want to be able to show the way for that. The unique because of what we put in, the experience of it across all sizes. That consistency you saw, is going to matter even more. Not just because you can, in fact, have one application with consistent experiences across different screen sizes. It is also because increasingly we are going to live in a world where a single application is, in fact, going to be distributed across multiple of our devices. And as that happens, you want one that consistency in terms of the end user experience. You want even that ex experience, that control plane to manage security. You want that from a developer standpoint. This notion of universal Windows apps is a very powerful concept because we are now aggregating the 300 plus million socket
innovative windows into one opportunity for our developers. That, to me, is what makes Windows unique. And that's what we're going to get focused on. That's what we're going to drive in a constant basis. We're also going to stay on the forefront of making Windows stand out as the most personal computing experience. It first means we're going to innovations around input-output, touch, gestures, speech, and many more. In fact, we're at the threshold. In fact, with the Windows phone that I have today, I am speaking to it a lot more than I have ever spoken to Windows. And, and that's just... So we will bring these more human ways to interface with technology. What Microsoft Research has done is pretty innovative. In fact, we learn from like, things that we have done in Xbox and Kinect, and now they're making their way in a mainstream way into the Windows experience. But it's not just about the technology. We are coming, going to go at this knowing fully well that users are going to care and care increasingly more about their data and their privacy and being in control of it. We want Windows to stand for that user control product to shine when it comes to be able to really have the user in control of experiences like Cortana, where you really need to be able to trust this agent on your behalf only when you give it permissions. That That, to me, matters are a lot more to all our customers and all our users. So let's pull this all together. Let's look at what we can do in terms of reinventing productivity and building platforms in this mobile-first, cloud-first world. Think about what we can do to transform organizations, starting with individuals. What Cortana can do for you personally, both at, in your life and at one drive or one note. It's not just about the individual. We are both at work and outside. It's the family. It's the soccer team. It's uh, my work group. You want to be able to have the tools that enable you to communicate, collaborate, share. Things that we do with Scott available to you. And we don't stop even at the team. But it's about business process. Because really, if you look at your daily life, you have things that you do in your life. There are things that you do with your work group. There are things that you do in terms of advancing some business process. And we want to be able to bring all of that together and harmonize all of that together. And to do that, we want to have that consistency of our IT experience, the consistency of the developer experience. That's what we as an ecosystem can do for any customer of ours, any individual customer or an organizational customer. So I want to show you some of this. I thought a lot about you know, a lot of things in our labs that are advanced technologies. And since when you're doing the vision thing, you can get to choose anything that's far out and talk about it. But I chose to sort of think about things that are pretty near term but are transformational in terms of what we can do for our customers. So I wanted to invite up on stage Steve Clayton, who's a colleague of mine, to help me with some of these demos. Start off first this phenomena of real Internet of Things. We all know, we talked about the fact that there's going to be 200 plus billion sensors. And when you really think about it, it's really the Internet of your things. Right? So when you're talking to a customer, they have these things in the field. And for the first time now, in a cost-effective way, they can put compute on them and collect data back from them so they can reason over it. Now, that all sounds great, but for what purpose? The purpose is, of course, think about what an elevator company now can do when you have the ability to have real-time access to the status of all the elevators in the field that you have and the service contracts, the insurance on those service contracts that you can write. 
it can be transformative to any customer of ours in terms of the business model. And that is something to bring together with embedded solutions, our intelligence uh, system service Azure, which allows you to collect that data and put it into and process it in real time. And then we have this Azure machine learning service, which is a, an amazing service, which I think preview and that at this conference. And that service allows you now to do advanced predictive analytics. Because we all need these data scientists, but you also want to have the power of what we have when we do speech recognition or, or voice you know, or vision or even Bing and take all that sophistication for applied ML and make it available for every one of the data scientists that's in your organization so that they can do these advanced predictive analytics. So to show you some of this in action, Steve, why don't you take it away? Sure. What side of ThyssenKrupp's global asset monitoring system? So the dashboard you see here has been built by ThyssenKrupp with their partner CGI. Now ThyssenKrupp is a global elevator company. They have 1.1 million elevators inside of their organization, organization can see from this dashboard is a real-time view of what's going on across that landscape of assets. So this literally is real-time data coming from sensors inside of elevators that's being pulled into the Azure Intelligence System Service and then populated into the dashboard. So we have uh, an orange uh, circle up here, an orange traffic light in this particular one. And you can see as I scroll, and the data is changing in real-time blur beneath us. So the, um, the alert that we have is right down here in the Virgin Virginia Mason Athletic Center. The Virginia Mason, Mason Athletic Center, it turns out, is the training facility for the world champion Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks fans? That's always a crowd pleaser. And what you can see on the dashboard now is that we have a view into the schematics of the layout of that building. We have the real-time information of the elevators moving and in action. All of this coming from sensors into the Azure Intelligence System Service. More details, so what type of elevator, where the elevator is located, so we have some breath. The thing I'm really interested in is this predicted health of 70%. And you talk about machine learning. And, and this is really where we can get to, uh, get to the kind of the gold mine of this data, if you like. So we'll drill into that, that elevator we want to take a look at. It's the field act we want to uh, want to take a look at. This is that CGI built. Absolutely. So CGI built this in partnership with ThyssenKrupp. Anybody inside of the organization is now starting to get that kind of real data culture that we've talked about. Be able to access information in real elevator. This one is a freight elevator. We can see the model. We can also see some of the real-time data around the landing status. So we can say this elevator is being called most frequently on the ground floor, as you might expect. But also real detailed sensor level details. So what's the average door close time? What's the average door open time? All the types of things that start to move. business from being a reactive maintenance into proactive and that's ultimately where they're trying to drive their business into being much more proactive. The two things I'm really interested in on this particular part of the monitoring system is that predicted health of 70% and then beneath that you'll see there's a critical alert uh, that's coming from Azure Machine Learning. Now the predicted health arises from taking all of the previous data of events and issues that have happened in learning models so we can start to learn well why did that event happen. So we do to the data to find out why did something happen in the past, and then we can use that same data to predict, well, why might that happen again? Into, into the Azure Machine Learning Workspace, into, the, uh, into our Machine Learning Workspace here, and you can see the model that we've run. So we're taking data at the top in a CSV file, feeding it into something called a multi-class multi decision jungle. Inside of the Machine Learning Workspace, we've got world-class algorithms, the type of algorithms that are being used inside of Cortana, inside of Bing, so we can start to apply reason and learning on top of this data. And then we treat that results in, if we visualize as if they're able to predict, we can predict with 75% accuracy. And, and this is... Breakthrough stuff, because think about it. What, in fact, the first time I saw this kind of tool was when I was working in Bing Engineering, and we needed to drive productivity of our own relevance and data scientists. And so we built all this tooling to do applied machine learning at scale. And the vision that we've had is how do we take all of that and make it available? Because now data science is not just for the consumer internet companies. 
data science and the tooling around it is for every industrial internet application. And we have that unique capability of taking what we learned in a very different segment and applying it now through the partner ecosystem to pretty much every industry vertical with advanced analytical capabilities. And that's right, and what you on that really pays off for Tiss and Krupp is what you see on the dashboard right now. So at the moment we have a predictive maintenance warning, we have a schedule of when we're planning to do maintenance on those elevators. So currently we're planning to do the scheduled maintenance on the 24th of the month, but by taking that machine learning, by doing predictive analytics, we're able to say actually we need to send an engineer out three days earlier to carry out that maintenance because we can predict with 75% accuracy that an issue is going to arrive. So that's where it really starts to change dramatically ThyssenKrupp's business, moves them into this proactive maintenance mode and out of the reactive maintenance mode. Great. What kind of an application you can build for an opportunity like Internet of Things? Because I think that this is one of those opportunities over the next 10 years will play out in a pretty big way. You can think of this as the new class of tier one applications that are going to be born in the cloud where people are going to rendezvous their data over it and the business model that you can have, those model, continuous model of updating and improving that model. So the business model wise, you're just not just building a project, is a project that continuously drives business transformation because you can expose the model as a set of APIs for the various applications that use it. But one of the other things that we also see is as there are these new classes of tier one applications, we also see this explosion of mobile apps. You are seeing that now in every enterprise. Enable you, especially, or even an end user wants to build an application rapidly. Think about, say, even this elevator company scenario. Say you want to spin up a field service app that's very specific for a particular role and a particular business process scenario. You want to have access to, in fact, all the APIs in your SaaS application. So you want all the APIs with data inside of Dynamics, inside of Office 365, inside of this uh, IoT application you built with. And you want to be able to churn out these apps, which are very task specific. And that opportunity is something that we want to enable. So we built a tool called Sienna, uh, which is available on the App Store for Windows today. And the vision with this tool is to bring this next generation of rapid application development for the mobile first, cloud first world where you're able to take SaaS applications that you build as well as customer users and the data behind them and convert them into apps that end users themselves can build. So why don't you show us Sienna? Sure. So um, we're going to carry that out our field service engineer. We want to get rid of these things and start to have more of these things out in the field. So mobile devices, mobile applications that are cloud first, mobile first applications. So I'm going to start inside of Project Sienna and very quickly with my PowerPoint skills and my Excel skills build an application. I connect out to a data source. I've got multiple different data sources here, data sources that are out on the web, things like Facebook, things like SharePoint inside of the organization. I've also got uh, applications, as you would expect, like Dynamics, Coursera, so a whole set that I can connect to. My data is set for services, so I'm going to select to import my data imports from the cloud, and I've got to give that a second to import. Okay, so I've got actions that I'm going to carry out, I've got sensors, and I've got jobs. Let me just make sure that we've got our data fully imported. And then we'll start to build our applications. This is my first screen. So I simply click over, I'm going to say I want to make a connection to Office 365. So this is something that's coming in the next preview of Sienna, the ability to connect directly into Office 365 of that rich platform. So in Office of that rich platform. So this is my shared calendar, it's the data calendar, it's the database of jobs that my engineers are going to go out into the field and carry out. We'll add in a second screen. So then I'm going to click over to the second screen. So as my engine over to the second screen. So as my engineer selects that job, I'm a very very simple application. But in a minute, I've built the rudimentary basics of my, my application. So I click from a job, takes me to the second screen. But now let's start filling out the capability on that second screen. And that's where we get to replace the clipboard and we get to replace the camera that my field engineer is currently using. I'm going to drop a control onto the page, and that control has a camera. It has a couple of uh, buttons that we're going to have on the side. We're just going to shift these around. We drag these out to the edge, make them slightly 
engineer uses on that mobile device. And then we're going to see the data that we have in the back end. So what I'd like Bob, that I'm about to take a photo of, is the one that the engineer has selected. So this is just the exact Excel syntax. This is just the exact Excel syntax. So if you can build an Excel spreadsheet, you can build this app. Exactly. So you can see now if I go back to run my application, click on job 1022, it appears in the screen below. 1023, it appears in the screen below. So we've done that first element of wiring up our application. Let's go back to screen two and connect these, wire these up to my that my engineers carry out. So they're going to and then they're going to perform those actions on a set of sensors. And we're now getting very close to having a finished application. A couple more things I just need to add in. I want my engineers to know which type of elevator that they're working on. So we'll make a connection again back into our, our back end. So I'm going to do a simple lookup statement. We're going to look up our jobs. Where the job ID. So for anybody who's kind of familiar with stuff, so simple package selects and now select it up there. We'll run the application and click on a particular job. So I've got 1022 as a Sky Shuttle 9000. The final piece is it would be really nice if my sensors over the on the right hand side of the screen were mapped. We'll do one uh, final piece of syntax and then we'll run our application. So in this one we're going to say so we want to filter the sensors package that's currently selected up there in the top. Left of our screen. So this is label four that we had up there and the text that we have in label four. You can see that I'm not really a developer, truly. Yeah. Okay, so now if I finally run the application, I'm going to do two, I've got a set of sensors on the right hand side. So let's finish this, uh, this job. <laughs> I'm out there doing my elevator and so that's my elevator. I'm going to align the control panel, click on save, and that gets saved. Space of time, build an application. And again, this is not about building a disconnected RAD tool. Practice in your own business model. You build these great applications. Think of them as tier one applications. You expose them as a set of APIs and platform capabilities. Then you can end that you're working with the end users, build business units to in fact build more applications on the edge using those APIs in combination with other SaaS APIs. That's the future. That's the kind of platform sensibility always. And we get to do that again in this mobile first world. Um, so that's pretty exciting for us and we're in the early days in the feedback. In fact, Fujitsu has taken this product and really built out an entire service line where they now think about thousands of apps being built, not just one app or one engagement. And that's, I think, a way for, forward for many of us. The next thing we want to talk about is we want to move from more the application development to the kind of productivity tools that can be transformative inside the organization. One of the, one of the things that we really need to break through the silos of the various apps is search, because search is beautiful. If you know what you're looking for, you type in the question, especially on the web, because of the web graph, you get back you know, your 10 blue links, and it's great. And we've taken that and really advanced it with things like Power BI now, even ask natural language queries, even inside of an organization on all your data. But still, search starts with the assumption that you know what you're looking for. 
There needs to be a better way because the ambient intelligence that's there inside of the organization doesn't surface. The knowledge doesn't surface or is not discoverable. So we built this product 12 to reach to become true knowledge of organizations because they can now, every individual in their office, discover information and be more productive. So we want to show you a little bit of Dwell. So Dell really is a great, great example of this, this notion that we talked about an ambient intelligence alongside Cortana. So what you see on my dashboard here now, inside of Dell, when I come into the office in the morning, this is what I get to see, the information that matters.